Melville Weston Fuller, Supreme Court Chief Justice. Melville was born on February 11, 1833, in Augusta, Maine. His mother's name was Captain Martin Weston, and his father's name was Frederick Augusta Fuller. Melville passed away on July 4, 1910. Melville Fuller graduated from Bowdoin College in 1853. After college, he pursued a legal career. He trained in the law in Bangor, Maine, and studied at Harvard Law School. In 1855, Fuller set up his own practice in Augusta. He didn't stay home state for very long, and the following year, he went west to Chicago, where he became immersed in politics as well as the law. Melville was elected as a Democrat to the Illinois Constitutional Convention of 1861 and to the State House of Representatives in 1862. President Grover Cleveland appointed him Chief Justice of the Supreme Court in 1888. He served until 1910, which was the year of his death. Fuller was married to Calista Reynolds from 1858 to 1864. That ended when she passed away. Two years later, he married Mary Ellen Kuba. The couple stayed together until Mary Ellen's death in 1904. Fuller had several children from each of his marriages. The landmark case I will be discussing is Plessy v. Ferguson. The case involved the plaintiff, Homer Adolph Plessy, and the defendant, John Howard Ferguson. The case was argued on April 13, 1896 until May 18, 1896, when the final decision was made. When the case did happen, the impact on American society continued to have restrictive legislation on your race, which continued until Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka in 1954. The case originated in Louisiana, New Orleans brought before Judge John Ferguson in the New Orleans Criminal Courthouse. The case began with Homer Plessley, who is one-eighth black, sat in the white row of the bus when he was going to Covington. When they asked him to move, he refused to move to the Jim Crow car, which resulted in him getting arrested. Plessley planned to sit in the white row before he got into the train so he could protest for what he believed in. He was in a committee to challenge the Jim Crow laws. His case first began in a criminal courthouse with the judge, John Ferguson. His verdict was that the railroad companies did not violate any of his rights and Plessley thought that his answer was unfair since it violated his rights, and two amendments. He filed a petition against Judge Ferguson. From there on, it was taken to the Supreme Court and continued to be taken care of there. Plessy continued to argue about the Equal Protection Clause that is covered through the 14th Amendment. He also used the 13th Amendment, but the majority found it to conflict with his two races. They also overlooked how Africans were treated in those days and said that whites and blacks are given equal faculties under the law and are equally punished as well. The case went to the Supreme Court because it violated the 13th Amendment, which made slavery unconstitutional, and the 14th Amendment, which stated that the state could not take away any rights from a citizen without due process of the law. The Supreme Court rejected Plessy's argument and was overruled 7-1 to one in majority for Ferguson from Chief Justices Melville Fuller, Stephen Field, Horace Gray, Henry Brown, George Shiwas Jr., Edward Wright, and Rufus Peckham. Majority thought of the 14th Amendment to enforce absolute equality between two races before the law and not to enforce social equality. Although the case is well known, it did not add anything to the Constitution or take away anything from the Constitution.